In this video, we describe binomial experiments and calculate the probability of a specific number of successes. Now, a binomial experiment uh, has two outcomes. They are typically called a success. One outcome is, and the other is called a failure. But we'll see in a minute, uh, success and failure can are really very arbitrary. So let's look at a, an example or two. A typical example might be where you toss a coin. It's a standard one. Uh, and what happens when you toss a coin? Uh, well, you get a head or tail. So we can decree that a head will be a success and a tail will be a failure. Now, uh, we can do something like roll a die. In this case, uh, let's decree that if you get a six, then that'll be a success. Uh, no six will be a failure. Now, we've seen before looking at some sports uh, types of situations where if a person went to bat, a uh, baseball player goes to bat, what is he interested in? He's interested in getting a hit. Okay, if he gets a hit, we'll call it a success. If there's uh, no hit or not a hit, uh, we'll say it's a, it's a failure. Now, situations like this typically occur when you're doing some quality control. For example, supposing you're interested in testing a product. So you look at a production line, you randomly pick out a, a product and check it out. And if it's defective, we'll say that's a success. And if it's okay, non-defective, then we'll say it's a failure. Uh, so you see the nature of what is going to be a success or a failure could very well depend upon what you're looking for. Uh, another type of example common is if you have a poll. People are constructing a poll about asking a question, and we want to make sure there's only two outcomes. So if, uh, if the question is so that we look at a yes answer or a vote for my candidate versus a no answer or vote for the other candidate or something like that, then we'll have two uh, types of outcomes. Now, when we have a binomial experiment like this, we're just not going to do it once. A characteristic property is, is that we repeat the experiment n times. And the, the n here is called the, n, the number of trials. Right? Now, what are we interested in doing? Well, uh, we're interested in the random variable that's going to count uh, the number of successes in these n trials. So, for example, if we toss a coin five times, we might be interested in counting the number of heads that we get. If we go to bat uh, five times in a baseball game, we might be interested in the number of hits. If we're going to poll a thousand people, we're going to be interested in the number of yes answers. Now, so we want to be uh, compute the probability that the random variable is going to be a specific number, say k. Okay, we'll work out a formula for that. Now, to work out that formula, we have to realize that there's some basic properties or assumptions or conditions that must must hold. Uh, the first one we already know is that the, the experiment has to have exactly two outcomes. Okay, now a second one, may not quite be so obvious, is that when we repeat these n trials, each trial has got to be independent. In other words, uh, if we toss a coin this third time, the, whether it's a heads or tail, is not going to depend on what it was the first time or the second time. If a person, we're assuming if they go to bat, and if it's going to be a model this by a binomial experiment, then whether or not he gets a hit or not, the second time doesn't depend on if he got a hit the first time. Now, the third condition which must be met here is that the probability of success in each trial 
is going to be the same. And actually what we normally do is we call the probability of success in the experiment P, and then the probability of failure would of course be 1 minus P, but instead of writing 1 minus P all the time, it's common to write that as a Q. So, for example, let's take something where uh, if we roll a die, every time we roll a die, if the probability is 1 sixth, we get a 6. Uh, then uh, no matter how many times we roll, it's still going to be that. We'll make the assumption if we are uh, checking uh, on a person's batting average every time he goes to bat, he's going to have to have the same probability of, of getting a hit. So, okay, so these are actually basic assumptions. Now, let's see if we can work out in an example what this probability would, would be instead of the abstract formula. We'll write it down in a moment. So let's go back to a situation we looked at in a previous video when we were using Excel. Uh, let's assume that we're going to deal with the uh, case where uh, we're looking at a batter who's going to hit and we'll say that there's he's going to bat in a game five times and the probability of him getting a hit, his batting average was 280, so we'll write that as down as 0.28. So then what's the probability of not getting a hit? Well, that's 1 minus 0.28 which if I do the arithmetic correctly, it's going to be 0.72. Okay, so now we know the values of these parameters. Let's see if we can work out uh, what the probability of getting exactly two hits is going to be. Okay, so if we, in five at-bats. So if we've got the five at-bats here, well, if we're going to get two hits, uh, where's he going to get those hits? It could be the first and the third place, or the, the second and the third at bat. So we've got to somehow select select the two places, two positions where he gets a hit. Well, how many ways can that be done? Well, that can be done in the combination of five positions, choose two. Okay, so for the heck, the arbitrary, we'll say he gets it in the first and the third place. Okay, and there's, of course, 10, uh, we know from computing combinations, there's 10 uh, ways that this will happen. Now, uh, let's take a look at what happens here. Probability of getting a hit is what? Well, we assumed it was going to be P here. Okay, and because we know the probability of success is going to be the same for each trial, the second time he goes to bat, the probability of getting a hit is going to be P, but he's, we don't want him to get a hit there, so that's going to be 1 minus P or Q, would be the probability of that second one. Uh, the third time, because it's the probability of success is going to be the same in each trial, would be P again. And the probability of not getting a hit the next time would be Q. And finally, Q is the probability of not getting a hit on the last at bat. So here we have one of the 10 sequences where he gets a hit, not a hit, and then a hit, and not a hit, and not a hit. So how do we calculate the probability of this particular sequence? Well, here we want to use the fact that the trials are independent. Okay, and what does that mean? That means that if the joint probability of two things happening, getting a hit and not getting a hit, getting a hit, etc., is going to be the product of the probabilities. So this works out to be what? It's going to be the probability of success, which was 0.28 uh, times twice, because there were two, two hits, times the probability of not getting a hit, which was 0.72 raised to the third power. Okay, so we just have to calculate out what that means. We can maybe do that with the calculator, simplifying things a little bit here. Uh, we'll just take it up front, 10, because we've already calculated the combination, times 0.28 raised to the second power times 0.72 raised to the third power. All right, so that's going to be a little over 29%. So that would be, for later purposes, 0.29, I think it was 26. Okay, so there we see how that works. Now, let's take a look now at the general formula here. How did we actually do this? The first number here, we had to look at the combination of the way we picked out the k places were among the n where we had successes, so that's going to be combinations of 
and choose K, and on each of the K places where there was success, the probability of success was P, so that will be P to the Kth power, and then on the remaining places, uh, there was a failure, so there should be N minus K uh, places where we had a failure. Okay, and so this gives the standard formula here for calculating the probability of uh, K successes in N trials. Okay, we'll continue this in the next video.